In this video, I'm going to walk you through the initial install of our 12 kilowatt hour Lux Power Hybrid Inverter and the Ethos 48 volt 15.3 kilowatt hour battery system with controller. I'm creating a backup power supply that will be tied into specific breakers in my home so we'll have reliable power in case of short term or long term power outages. First thing I wanted to do was create a backer board. Some might call this a mounting board. The inverter needs to be mounted on the wall and it weighs more than 120 pounds. I wanted an easy to work with area for our inverter, batteries, manual transfer switch, and the components of the system. The batteries are heavy. They do sit on the ground, but they need to be mounted to the wall so they stay secure. This wall, as you saw, is part concrete foundation, part stick frame. So to me, a backer board was gonna be our best option. We went with black exterior interior paint and fun fact, this system can be placed outdoors. It's rated for outdoors. We just happen to be installing it close to the main panel inside the garage. Okay, this Ethos battery system is paired with a 12,000 watt Lux inverter. It has its own touchscreen display, three inputs for solar panels, and a built-in UPS module that lets it switch between grid power and off-grid power. It can handle solar setups up to 18,000 watts. Plus, this is capable of smart load control, AC coupling, peak shaving. This means it keeps your home protected during blackouts or unstable grid conditions. And it can even cut down on your electric bills. If you wanted to go that route, I'm not. Let's get into the initial setup of the system. Now that we've got our backer board in place, I'm going to ensure the mounting hardware is level and that the provided screws, that at least one of them is in the stud. The rest are going to be tied nicely into our backer board. While this could be a one person job, I highly recommend two people to get the inverter positioned correctly on the included okay. mounting hardware. In our garage, as it likely is in yours too, the floor slopes down to the main garage door. This Ethos battery system comes with a bottom base. I took some old vinyl planks and leveled out the base. This system comes with the hardware you need to mount this to the wall. Each of the three batteries and the controller box connect together and then to the wall. And while it's not the end of the world, if you don't get it level, try to get it level, but again, it's not gonna impact the usability of the batteries if it's not perfectly level. As you can see, this is a modular system. Each of those battery modules are 48 volt and a little over five kilowatt hours each. You can expand this system a lot bigger than this and tie it all into that one controller box that I'm putting on right there. Now back to the inverter. Remember we mounted this using the included hardware and these brackets on both sides are an extra measure to ensure that the inverter, it's not going anywhere. One reason this system is a great option for DIYers, at least this stage of the setup, are these cables. They're included and you've got the manual, really easy to follow. The wires and layout on the battery system, it's just about as intuitive as you can get. Same with the communication cables. These help the controller, the brains, relay information about each particular battery. As you can see, all the connections are safe for outdoor use. 
This system allows you to store energy for use when you need it. I'm configuring this system to access energy from the sun, from the grid if I want, and eventually, because the inverter can do it, from a generator as well. Now that we've got the connections for the batteries to the controller, this cable allows the controller to communicate with the inverter. And these connections will connect the controller, the battery system's actual DC power, over to the inverter for AC use. Okay, one critique, and I know that every setup is different, but a control box of some type of connection from the controller to the inverter would be nice, but let's make one ourselves. I had some hockey tape close by. I used that to mark where I can't cut. I opted to go with liquid tight conduit. I'll show you more of that in a minute. I went with inch and a half. This size easily fits the larger battery wires. It's a clean setup and even though my system's in the garage, it can be mounted on the exterior wall of your home. So that liquid tight conduit's a solid choice. Plus, it's relatively easy to work with too. All of the details on what I'm using and recommendations for what to buy can be found at buckhorncliffs.com. I've got a link in the description. And here I'm just using some files. I've got two of them in particular, one's smaller, one's bigger, just to clean things up. And there is a lip that goes across the width of the back of the protective cover that I need gone so the conduit will fit nicely. The multi-tool makes this about as simple as you can get. Prior to getting our side panel liquid tight conduit connection in place, we need to configure each battery ID. Which is done with these dip switches. I only need to configure three batteries, so I just use the manual. You can do one on top or one on bottom, whatever's your preference. And the communication on the controller, I could add 16 modules in parallel, but today, just three. And now you can see what I mean about it'd be nice if there was a built-in conduit controller or box, but I think this works great. Remember, this is built for outside use, so everything inside that protective cover is technically water resistant. And one other gripe, there's only one screw securing this, well, in addition to how it snaps in. I think there should be a screw at the bottom of the panel as well. Other than cutting your conduit to size, there's really no need for tools with this liquid tight conduit. It makes it pretty simple. You load the conduit into the connector and hand tighten it. I purchased this liquid tight on Amazon and it's so much cheaper than Home Depot. Plus Home Depot didn't carry the size in store. Okay, so underneath the inverter, they have a suggestion on what goes where, which in my opinion doesn't matter. Just make it fit to your specific layout. And take your time with getting everything secure. Adjusting conduit can be annoying if you're not used to it.
and you're going to need reducing washers. That's that right there inside and outside the inverter box. For this sizing, I went with a two inch reduced down to a one and a half inch. My goal with this system is to control specific power needs in case of a short or long-term grid problem, meaning we don't have power from our provider, we'll be all good. The system will also control a complete off-grid setup. You could sell back excess energy to your provider if they have a program for that. I'm configuring this system to tie into specific breakers in my main panel to power our well pump, freezer and fridge, the electric side of our propane appliances, and some lights and outlets. The batteries store DC power, which can be created via the sun. Having a proper solar array allows me to capture that energy and save it. And if the sun isn't shining, I will have a dedicated breaker in my main panel to charge the batteries. Plus, I can attach a generator. This inverter, it, it can do it all. And as you can see, as we go through this install process, there hasn't been anything that you're not capable of doing. It might take some extra time. You can use this video and the blog post as a reference. The following videos will tie into your main panel using a manual transfer switch. If you're unsure of that process, you can do everything you're seeing here and then just hand over the next steps of actually powering your appliances to an electrician you trust. When I'm connecting the positive and negative wires from the battery, there's not a need to put one positive on the left and one on the right side, but positive does go to positive only. Very simple. And I didn't, but I do highly recommend using ferrules on your wire connections. This right here is the communication cable. That plugs in to the inverter from the battery. You'll wanna check out the video on configuring the Ethos battery controller to the Lux power inverter which the little screens and the manuals make it very easy to do. Each battery and the controller has a breaker. Turn each on, then turn on your breaker in the main panel to test that everything is working properly, at least for this stage of the install. Right there. We can see that the inverter has power for now. Let's turn off the breaker in the inverter box until we're ready to tell the system about the Ethos battery configuration. Make sure to subscribe and let me know if you've got any questions.